Hi, right, this is Frank Taylor with Nature at Your Door. I'm just outside my door again today, and I'm up on the road next to my house. And as you can see, this is unpaved road, just gravel on it. And it's the best habitat that I know of, and the best place for me to find a plant called coltsfoot. And coltsfoot is really interesting because it's very, very ubiquitous in the backcountry roads like this and across North America. And it's a non native. It was introduced here by European settlers, and it's actually native and found all across Europe. Asia and even parts of North Africa across to Morocco. Today I'm going to feature coltsfoot. I'm going to talk about its biology, its interesting way of growing, and its historical uses and why it's here in the Americas or the United States. So stay tuned. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're going to find. And here's to make this invasive. Dogwoods are flowering. And I just took a couple swipes. Terrestrial environment. Uh, produce seed pollen. And it's. So Colt's foot gets its common name because of the shape of the leaf. And the leaf is said to be shaped like, well, a Colt's foot. So take a look at this leaf and tell me what you think. The genus part of its scientific name is Tussilago, and that's from two words in Latin. Tussi, which means cough, and ago, which means to be act on. So the scientific genus name is to act on a cough. And so this plant was originally used medicinally as a cough suppressant. The early settlers to North America would bring seed packets with them. Seed packets for their farm, for their herb garden, for their medicinal garden, and their kitchen garden. This plant was one of the ones they brought with them purposely and planted. It has long since escaped from the settlers' gardens and occurs widespread across North America now. And it's one of the first flowers to come up in the spring. And when you see it, well, it looks like a dandelion at first until you go up closer. And so one of the reasons I wanted to do this is because I know lots and lots of people have seen it because of these really bright yellow flowers. But as they walked by or drove by, they probably paid it no attention because it looks like a common plant that people here call weed, which is the dandelion, another plant brought purposely by European settlers, non-native to the U.S., and used, brought for its medicinal and kitchen and food uses. So let's take a closer look at Colt's foot. Well, here you can see that it actually flowers before any leaves come out. So you're gonna see these stems and flowers long before you see any leaves. And these leaves here are, have just started emerging in the last couple days. I've been keeping my eye on these. If you look at the stem of the colt's foot flower, you can see that it has what biologists call scale-like leaves on the edges. It's a composite flower and does look very much like the dandelion. And like the dandelion flower, when it turns to seeds, it creates these wind-blown tufts that carry the seeds from place to place, which helps explain its ubiquitous large seed production, an easy way to disperse seeds, and apparently an ability to grow in places where a lot of plant, other plants can't tough it out. I've seen colt's foot on the sides of roads and gravel in what botanists call waste places, exposed dirt, and it just seems to thrive in these environments. You might perhaps refer to this one as an invasive plant. <sighs> Typically have a very effective way of dispersing seeds. <sighs> And these seed pods are windblown and carried by the fluff at the end, like dandelion seeds and milkweed seeds, for example. It's hard to imagine a tougher place for a plant to grow. And you can see that this colt's foot has really taken advantage of this rough place to live and thrives in it. 
it really seems to prefer growing right in the ditch and it's not in the woods it's not on the margin it's only found right here in this ditch probably thriving on the extra water that's here this is a plant that doesn't open unless there's sunlight. So you can see they're growing in this pretty, pretty rough environment. If you look at these plants here, they have come up and flowered and already turning to seed. And this one has completely gone to seed and the seeds have already blown away. It's a pretty rough place for a plant to grow up. This is just gravel here on the side of the road, exposed to cars going by regularly. And you can see that there are no leaves on this yet. And it's the stems have come up, it's flowered. Many of these have already been pollinated and the flowers are now closed as it gets ready to go to seed. And these flowers have actually completely finished their life cycle, gone to seed and the seeds have blown away. Here's a close-up of an emerging colt's foot leaf. And right now they're pretty small, but by the end of the growing season, these leaves will be bigger than my hand. And they come to these little, little points on the edges. And this is said to look like a colt's foot or a colt's footprint. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching this episode of Nature at Your Door. I enjoyed sharing this with you, and I'm planning to do some episodes on some of these plants that you can find just outside your door, in your yard, in a local park, or a fence row, or roadside near you. A lot of them are non-natives, they have fascinating biology, often overlooked when people say, ah, those are just weeds, but many of them have rich histories both with early settlers and indigenous peoples of America. So stay tuned and check out my episodes coming up on spring flowers that grow vigorously at this time of the year. Many of them considered weeds, but I think they're just so cool. Don't forget, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe if you like what I do. And I love hearing from you. Please leave me a comment or ask me a question and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks for watching.